Hello everyone, welcome back to a sketchbook session video. Um, this one is actually going to be in real time, I think. Um, note though that this is a voiceover, I'm not actually talking while drawing. But um, I was going to do some post practices in my sketchbook and as you can see I finished one and then I figured this would be a fun thing to record. I think you guys would uh, enjoy it uh, since I have a tendency to do a rough sketch or even a finished sketch before I start recording for most of my videos and drawings. And um, you guys don't get to see the sketching part, so yeah, why not uh, have something focused on sketching a little bit every now and then. And um, that's what this video is. And it's not too long. I think I did uh, all of these in about 30 minutes. Yeah, that's how long the recording is. And it's going to be four different uh, poses. So yeah, why not uh, have it non-sped up so that you guys can see how long it actually takes. Because honestly, sometimes I watch um, a lot of uh, sped up time lapses of people drawing amazing things or doing line art or something and subconsciously I feel like I should be drawing that fast in real life. I'm not sure if anyone else gets that but uh, I feel like sometimes I try to do my strokes too fast and stuff like that because in my mind you're supposed to do it really fast even though I know that what I've seen is sped up like four times, but still it leaves that uh, residue of uh, got to be fast in my mind, and it's not good. You have to think before you draw your lines, especially when you do something trickier. And um, I was using references for these, obviously. I'm not uh, trying to practice by just uh, remembering stuff from my mind. When I'm practicing, I'm trying to actually learn new information from images and uh, build my mental library so that when I am actually drawing the comic, I can uh, see those images in my mind and I don't have to spend time looking for references for every single post that I'm doing. And um, oh, I guess uh, I should tell anyone who's new here, um, I'm Minna and I make a comic called Stand Still, Stay Silent, it's a webcomic. Uh, I make four pages every week and uh, it's a post-apocalyptic Nordic adventure comic. Uh, some horror, lots of um, friendship and humor and fun stuff. Yeah, check it out if you're you're into comics and um, yeah, that's uh, that's what these uh, practices are for. I need I need to know a lot of uh, different poses for that kind of drawing. And also, the characters I'm drawing for this practice are the characters from my comic, like the reference. Uh, uh, people, I didn't just copy them straight on. I I copied the pose. That's what's important. But uh, um, for me, it actually makes it a little bit more challenging if I change the reference picture a little bit. Uh, either try to rotate the uh, like the perspective a little bit and imagine it from a different view. Uh, but for this one, I kept the poses exactly the same, but I changed the characters to uh, the people into my characters and this, what uh, really made it tricky was uh, give them my characters uh, clothing that they had in the comic, which meant that I couldn't just uh, draw what I saw in the pictures line for line and whatever regular clothing they were wearing. I had to actually think about how the clothes my characters wear would fit over the form that I was drawing, which um, made it a bit more difficult and that's good. The more difficult something is or more I have to 
think about something when I'm drawing, the more I actually learn. When I do some practices where it's really easy and I don't really have to think about it a lot, then I don't really learn so much. The result might be nice and look kind of cool and be like, oh, you can draw really well. But really, I don't actually remember much from the practice. But these kind of practices, I have to think a lot and thinking a lot means that I actually remember them somewhere in my mind, which is the whole point. And um, as you can see, I start the sketches with a uh, like a green little marker just to get the overall proportions of the poses down and the balance and uh, like the overall form. I'm not actually focusing at all on anatomy for this practice. If I wanted to practice anatomy, I would be looking for uh, nude models where I can see muscles and stuff. All of these were uh, references of clothes people, so you couldn't really see muscles and stuff. And uh, oh yeah, I guess I should mention the references were like uh, uh, parkour and uh, sports and uh, what else, like dancing poses. Uh, I find those to be really cool for some interesting poses. If you use Google like pose reference or artist pose references, you usually get very basic poses uh, from straight on perspectives and stuff. Like, you know, someone standing just with their arms down or like a sensual, I don't know. You know what kind of poses you get when you Google that, uh, very basic ones. Um, but like sport pho sports photography and uh, um, like uh, skateboarding photography, those are really cool. Especially skateboarding photography. Uh, in that community, people seem to really value very extreme perspectives with uh, like fish eye lenses and stuff. So definitely check that out if you're looking for uh, reference photos for very tricky poses and uh, perspectives. People photographing the tricks they do in the air and stuff. So yeah, that's uh, what kind of stuff I use when I do these practices. Mm, what was I actually talking about? Oh yeah, I was saying that uh, I'm not focusing on at anatomy and things being correct for these practices. Um, I'm really only focusing on the poses and getting things to look dynamic. Like, that's what I'm doing. I'm practicing dynamic poses and uh, I want to try to retain the feel of motion and tension and uh, depth in the drawings. I don't care if I get the, some joints or muscles wrong or strange. Um, that's not the point of this practice. I really just uh, want to get the movement down. Because that's really, at least in my opinion, when doing comics, way more important than correct anatomy. And I'm sure someone's gonna be horrified by that, like, oh my god, correct anatomy is the most important part. But honestly, when I look at comics, I I don't like the ones where the anatomy is all correct and you can see all the little muscles in the right places, but it all looks really stiff and the poses are uninteresting. I much prefer the ones where you don't even notice the anatomy or maybe it's even wrong, but everything looks really cool and flows really well as far as the poses and the, the way the characters move around. And that's the kind of stuff I want to um, focus on for myself. And of course, I always practice anatomy too. Don't get mad at me for saying that I don't care about it as much. But uh, I really want to just focus on getting the movement right. And uh, that's why that's why I'm not doing these kind of practices with uh, necessarily muscular nude models. I mean, that would be good good practice too, but uh, 
also learning how to draw like uh, clothing folds and uh, stuff like that in, uh, in cool poses is a uh, skill uh, in itself that's very difficult and like shoes i really need to practice more shoes i feel like uh, i always have difficulties with the like the bottom of the shoes how they they are shaped and yeah, that's another another issue for another day. Maybe I could record some shoe drawing for another video. Wouldn't that be fun? An hour of drawing shoes. I mean, it would be cool. I see some people sketch shoes or sketchbooks full of uh, shoe drawings, like very, um, what's it called? Fashion illustration styles and they always look so cool. I'm very envious of people who can draw really cool looking shoes. Um, all I can draw is the boots and even then the bottom of them gives me trouble. Anyway, you might wonder if um, I use reference pictures as I'm using for these when I draw my comic and all of the poses in those and the answer is actually no. Nowadays I don't or I very rarely need to or feel like spending the time looking for reference pictures for poses. I'm actually pretty good at uh, seeing stuff in my mind nowadays. I practice so many different poses for so long now. Like I've been doing comics for seven years now, I think. Every time I say how long I've been doing comics, I give a different answer because I can't remember. But for many years now, and I've drawn, you know, almost 2,000 pages by now. And um, with that amount of pages, you kind of learn all of the poses you tend to use. And I'm able to think of new ones in my mind. And these kind of practices just add to the library that I have. And I don't need to look for the references anymore. Um, except in cases where I need... Uh, to make sure I have uh, anatomy for something correct and make sure how that like muscles are interlocking kind of correctly and such but uh, yeah and the reason why I don't like prefer to be able to not use references while drawing the comic is simply that it takes so much time finding the correct ones or ones that are usable um, because I actually used to need to use references a lot for the first couple of years. Like when I was doing a Red Tails Dream, um, that was my first comic when I was actually drawing, or not even comic, just first time in general when I was drawing humans. I used to just draw animal characters before that. And um, drawing humans was really difficult for me. And uh, even simple poses, I had to constantly reference uh, pictures because I had no idea how how things looked and everything seemed so difficult like specifically I can remember having to over and over again reference someone standing with crossed arms like crossed arms from the side from above from straight forward and I like drawing people with crossed arms um, I'm sure if you read my comics you kind of notice that uh, well, may maybe you don't notice but I have noticed that I that's one of my favorite poses for someone to be in with crossed arms and uh, yeah it's really difficult I used to be really confused about how the arms interlock and I would even like cross my own arms and try to figure out what the heck I'm doing and draw it but um, yeah it was just so difficult I had to constantly over and over again look for reference pictures and I couldn't like use one that was from a different angle than what I wanted to draw. So that always took a really long time finding a picture of someone from the right angle that I can actually use. And it was really annoying because it took so much time and it uh, disrupted my flow of actually drawing the pages. And that's just one thing I had to reference everything else too, like uh, someone running or stretching their arms or pointing at something basically anything that wasn't just uh, someone sitting down normally or kind of standing around everything else was like 
difficult. Any hand movements, like a fist, I had to Google fists all the time, or uh, like try to take a picture of my own fist, and uh, you know, all those kind of things. And it took so much time, and uh, eventually, by practicing from those references, I learned how things looked, and also just learning like anatomy in general. I kind of learned how to construct the poses in my mind and see them in my mind a little bit better. So nowadays I don't need to reference most poses. Like crossed arms is so easy for me to draw now from any angle and any perspective. It's just easy. Same with like sitting and stretching and pointing and any kind of hand pose basically I don't need to reference. And um, yeah, it's so much easier now. Um, or not easier, but faster. Because I know I can just think about it and go in straight without having to spend uh, ages trying to find something in Google image search. <laughs> but that's what I started with. So if you feel like you have to constantly reference your weirder poses, uh, just know that I used to have to do that too. And of course, it's uh, the weirder poses you want to draw, the harder it is to find a picture of it. So you kind of have to get to a point where you can construct them in your mind to be able to do it. And the other way to do it is of course to have a elaborate photo shoot area in your home where you can take photos of yourself in weird poses like jumping and you know, doing karate kicks towards the camera. And some artists do that, like I know uh, there's comic artists who have like a friend or a spouse who every time they need a specific pose they ask their significant other to pose for them. Like pretend to lie dead on the sofa or jumping and uh, standing on their hands. I mean there's some poses you can't really take if the person can't really do it, <laughs> which is really difficult. And in those cases you kind of just have to figure it out. But yeah, if you practice enough, as I have, you don't need the references anymore as much. Um, you can just do these practices to add to your mind. Ah, now it looks like we're going to draw Rainer. This uh, was a photo of someone kicking a football. Or as Americans say, soccer, but you know, a ball that you kick. So that's the pose I'm drawing. And um, by the way, I kind of made it seem like uh, it becomes very easy to draw these kind of poses once you practice it a lot. And maybe for some artists it does become super super easy. Uh, but honestly I still struggle a fair amount with trickier poses, especially from uh, intense perspectives, like with a lot of foreshortening and stuff. Like it hasn't become super easy or just something I can do without thinking. And there's still a lot of poses where there's something specific I want to draw in the comic, uh, in an action scene or something, and uh, I realized that I can't really figure out how to draw it. And sometimes I, I end up not doing that pose because I can't find a reference picture to help me out because it's too specific, too like weird of a pose, like I'm not gonna find something like it um, to help me out and uh, I can't figure it out in my mind or by trying to find it by construction and sometimes I give up uh, and just do a slightly simple, simpler one uh, just as I used to do you know, years ago for simpler poses. And I hope eventually I will be good enough that even the hardest poses that I can think of, I will be able to do them eventually. But yeah, even still, there are poses where I go, I cannot figure this out. And I try to do it and it just looks wrong and lame and not at all as cool as I had wanted to make it. And uh, yeah, but I still try and do my best and uh, every time I come across something that's a little bit too hard to do, at least trying makes uh, 
me learn a little bit something. Um, if nothing else, at least knowing that uh, this is an area that I need to study a bit more. And one of them is actually, um, I would say, very extreme top-down or worm's eye view, where you have a very distorted uh, proportion of bodies, uh, where it looks kind of weird. Like, I still kind of feel weird drawing. And, like, for example, the first drawing we did here, it's Sigrun and her arm up like that. And it's pretty close to the reference photo and a decent shot of it, but it still looks so weird, like uh, how her leg just kind of comes out of her boob kind of weirdly, even though that's how it works when you look from top down and you see someone's leg. It's gonna come out from your stomach or from the back of your head if you're running and it looks so weird to me and I I know that's an area where I need to practice and uh, learn to not feel weirded out by the extreme top-down view of a person. And the same with like a worm's eye view. Um, I can kind of do a maybe 45 degree-ish view, but then when you get more steep it becomes so weird looking that uh, I kind of get nervous and then I don't do it, even though it will look cool. By the way, and remember a couple of weeks ago when I was painting that uh, pink and green and white painting of Rainer that was uh, color-wise based on this beautiful plant named Ace Dromanti Trio Star, and I mentioned that if I ever come across it in a store, I would probably buy it because it's so beautiful. And guess what? I found it last week. <laughs> And now I have it, and it looks amazing! And it cost me only 7 euros, which is kind of crazy. Um, well, it's not actually. Um, when you get uh, a plant that cheap, and it has actually marked down 50% from 14 euros, uh, there's something wrong with it, and there is. there were bugs on it. Uh, I didn't see them at the store yet, but they did crawl out of their little crevices after I took it home and let it rest over the night. But I don't care, I keep it away from my other plants and I'm trying to poison the bugs. They weren't too many. I killed all the ones that I found and the nest, uh, it's mealy bugs. And I uh, haven't seen them in a couple days, so we'll see how that works out. But either way, it is so beautiful, it's just so strange looking, like the pink underside and the stripes and stuff. I can't believe I found it just at the garden center. I just went there to buy a pot and some soil, potting soil, and um, they had a bunch of new plants in. I guess their um, after Christmas restock of plants had come in and they were just sitting in these huge, um, not trellises, more like uh, big metal carts with like several layers on them with wheels and not quite in their shelves yet anywhere just laying around the store and one of them on the bottom shelf where a bunch of these just crammed in there and I was like ah there's the plant I said I wanted and I decided to just buy it and I just crawled around on the floor because it was on the bottom and pulled them all out and picked out the one that was most beautiful. And by most beautiful I mean the one that had most like white stripes on it and white in general because that's what causes the amazing pink underside of it. Um, because the white parts, they don't have chlorophyll uh, so the light just goes straight through while the parts that do have chlorophyll, aka the green ones, and uh, don't really let the light through because it wants to use the light to make food for itself. So that's why you get those uh, crazy stripes of light and uh, dark on the underside. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with it. Um, there is one problem though that I'm having and that's the fact that uh, I have a very simple color, color team for my home. 
I like keeping things very uh, clear looking as far as interior design. Uh, I have dark brown floors and white furniture and then I have green plants and that's it. I don't have colorful things uh, because it makes me distracted and stressed out. And now I have this very eye-catching shining pink plant that's kinda just uh, the centerpiece of the whole apartment right now. And it is very beautiful and I, I'm looking at it right now and it's uh, very calming and uh, makes me happy but uh, I'm also kind of annoyed that it's clashing with my whole my whole aesthetic for the apartment and I'll have to figure something out for it. I think I might just make one corner in my apartment that's like this is where the colorful things are allowed to be and the only thing that's going to be in there is gonna be this plant. I think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Because right now it's kind of in the center, so you see it constantly, no matter where you are. But yeah, that's the update on that. I found the weird plant that I found. Stromatis Trio Star. Or in Finnish called a Nukulena Trio Star. Very beautiful. I mean, it might still die. And then I don't have to think about where to put it. And then I maybe just had it for a couple of weeks for... 7 euros, not bad. I've got them my enjoyment out of it. But uh, yeah, that was a fun fact what I did last week. Mikkel is looking a lot like he's dancing, by the way, in this, uh, this drawing. The reference picture was actually of a skateboarding person. So, you know, you can kind of imagine a skateboard under his feet and uh, that's what the pose is, but yeah, it looks like he's making a very strange uh, semi-dabbing in the wrong direction kind of dance move or something. And I kind of went with it and made him look like he's doing that. I mean, it's hilarious. Can you imagine Mikkel dancing? Uh, I mean, you can now, I think, but it looks very wrong. <laughs> I really enjoyed drawing this one. It's the last one, by the way. Um, we got all of the characters. Well, not only. He's not uh, uh, quite the main character just yet. He's in the. He's doing his own thing, so he doesn't get to be included in these uh, um, group drawing sessions just yet. He gets to only be in his lonesome, lonely drawings by himself. But hey, we got to see him a little bit more lately. And I'm glad you guys have enjoyed it. So many people have been just obsessing over him having a little bit of stubble. Like, <laughs> I get it, I never draw anyone, any of the characters uh, having stubble. And everyone's always wondering how they shave. And, or when they shave. And I, like when do you think they shave? In the morning. I never draw anyone going to the bathroom either. Yet you never see anyone pee themselves because yeah that's the same with nobody ever having stubble I mean Mikkel has his uh, uh, sideburns and he keeps those trimmed nicely now I'm just thinking if I should draw everyone with stubble someday no <laughs> that would be too weird break the character form illusion I mean if you look a lot I have a lot of like mangas and comics in general. You don't often see characters who don't have like a beard as a thing, just randomly growing stubble. It's if it's in someone's image to not have a beard, then you won't get them to have stubble. Except if you're lost in the woods, like Onni is. Hence his current uh, facial situation. And um, I guess before we end. Oh, we're very close to the end, I suppose. Um, but I think I still have time to mention that uh, I've been working on the cover for Volume 3. Uh, maybe I was already working last week, I don't remember. But I have been working on it yesterday and I will work on it more today. I'm doing the line art right now. And it's starting to look really nice. I think you guys will 
really enjoy the way it's going to look. It's going to have our horsey friend on it. You know the one. Um, and it's gonna look really cool. Taking really long though because there's so much uh, so much detail, so much um, like layout stuff I have to calculate and keep in mind. Like I'm doing the thing with the spines where um, when you put all the volumes in one row, the spines kind of make one image. So I kind of have to make sure they all line up and everything like that. And it's uh, kind of tedious and takes way more time than just a regular illustration, having to do all of the layout consideration at the same time. But uh, it's coming along and maybe Maybe next week I will be able to show you guys a little bit something. I'm not recording it though, I thought I would, but uh, I noticed that it got too distracting trying to record and, uh, you know, remember to click record and stop recording when I'm going for a walk for an hour and stuff like that. And it was just going to end up a pain to remember that since it's taken so long. But it is happening and I will... Uh, Show you guys uh, how it's coming along, coming along pretty soon. And after that, I have to <clears throat> do some uh, extras for the back of the book. Need to draw the. <clears throat> Excuse me, losing my voice at the end of this video. But yeah, I have to do the um, extra um, comic, like the little four pages. I don't actually know yet what uh, it's gonna be. I have a few ideas, but I haven't decided which one yet. Um, weirdly, I already know what I'm gonna draw for book four before I know what to draw for book three. I have like a really fun idea for the extra uh, bonus comic for book four. But yeah, book three, don't know yet. I'll have to figure it out uh, next week when I hopefully start drawing it. And we're done. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this relaxed, uh, real time, uh, dynamic process sketching session and read my comic and I will see you guys next week for the the next video and my weekend streams on Twitch you can come stop by I'm humming fluff on Twitch too I draw on Fridays I do some comic drawing and on Saturdays I do some regular whatever drawing usually working on my side project. So yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.